Hi, Luke here from BassGorilla.com and today we're taking a look at this awesome synth from Sonic Faction called Clone. All the sounds in Clone have been resampled from the legendary SH-101, which was a vintage synth by Roland that was sold between 1982 and 1986. Now that original synth was only a monophonic synth, meaning you could only play one note at a time. However, Sonic Faction have taken this a step further and made it available as a polyphonic synth and added a whole range of different effects to it. So there are lots of new features in this version by Sonic Faction and we're going to be taking a look at it just in just a sec but really recommend this synth. I think you can get some awesome rhythms and crazy sounds out of it which I'm going to demonstrate to you in this video. Let's take a look at the interface. You'll see that the interface is laid out in a way that makes it very simple and very easy to understand while at the same time giving you a decent amount of control over a wide range of parameters. So on the extreme left we have the master volume, the detune amount and the glide time. And we also have the ability to switch between polyphonic and monophonic. To the right of that we have the oscillator section. So within here you'll see that there are separate oscillators. We have oscillator 1 up here at the top. Then we have pulse width modulation here. And then we have another oscillator. And this is followed by a sub oscillator. And then we also have a noise oscillator. So I'll demonstrate those in just a second. To the right of the oscillator section, we have the delta triangulator. And this is where clone really shines. I will be demonstrating this later on in the video, but this section enables you to create some really crazy rhythms and filter movements and interesting rhythmical things that you can do in this synth that make it very very unique and give it a great sound. To the right of the delta triangulator section you'll see that we have seven tabs for controlling filter, envelope which we can assign to pitch and amplitude, shaping, LFO, FX, arpeggiation and presets and I'll be demonstrating those to you in this video as well. So let's take a look at the oscillator section. That's just the basic sound that we have right now and that sound is being created from a combination of different oscillators. But what I'm going to do is turn the level down on the noise oscillator, on the sub oscillator, on the saw wave oscillator. I'm going to move the pulse width modulation all the way to the left and we're just going to start with this pulse wave and we have the ability to switch between four different octaves it's very high there I'm gonna leave it on eight and can adjust the volume of that so there's a decent volume what we can now do with the pulse width modulation is change the shape of those pulses. We can make them very tall and thin or we can make them fatter and wider and that really changes the sound. So that might sound a little bit thin to you when we get all the way to the right side but that can be a very useful effect to use especially when you're mixing this this pulse width modulation and pulse wave oscillator with a saw wave. So let's increase the level of the saw wave now. I'm going to actually take the pulse wave oscillator all the way down so you won't hear it. So this is just a saw. When you activate the NZE you get a very different sound. and it sounds a, bit, a lot dirtier. Okay, so... Saw wave, increase the pulse wave level. And now let's play with the pulse width modulation. Now let's increase the level of the sub oscillator. 
And with the sub oscillator, you can switch between minus one and minus two. That sounds like this. Minus two. So if you want to have it two octaves below the other oscillators, then that can create a fuller wall of sound. And now let's introduce some noise. So noise can help to just fill in the background and fill in some of the frequencies which aren't being occupied when you play notes in the synth and it can help to get a nice fuller, nice more rounded sound. I would use subtle amounts of noise and not overdo it. So that's the oscillator section. Okay. Now we're going to move on and talk about this next section, which is called the Delta Triangulator. And this is where a lot of the fun is going to come in with this synth. So first of all, you'll see that we have A at the top, F on the left, and P on the right. So A is for amp, amplitude, F is for filter, and P is for pitch. And what these are, are three hardwired LFOs all in one. So they work independently of each other and we can start to really change the nature of the sound. So what I'm going to do is just adjust this sound a little bit. I'm going to come over into the envelope tab and I'm going to give it a quicker attack. I'm also going to come into the filter tab and just increase the frequency. Okay, so now it's a lot easier to hear and I'll be able to demonstrate what's happening here. So on A, we have the amp selected. I can click on F and select filter or P and select pitch. Let's click on A for a second and you'll see that we have two circles inside the Delta Triangulator. So the, out the outer circle has a dial on it and if you click there and drag up and down, you're going to adjust the rate of the LFO and the inner circle has a small dial that you can see it's a small gray circle and that adjusts the lfo type so let's listen to that so you can hear how the amplitude is changing from the LFO that's adjusting the rate here. And we can also adjust the LFO type. Squares. Triangles, I believe. Okay, so let's click on F now and we can adjust the LFO for the filter independently. So I'm gonna bring up the rate. And you can hear how we've got a really interesting rhythm going now. The filter is being modulated independently of the amplitude. Let's adjust the amplitude rate. There you go. There's a very interesting rhythm we have. We could even play with the pitch but I'm gonna leave the pitch how it is. In this section of the video, I want to demonstrate these seven tabs to you and the parameters within them to show you how much you can sculpt and shape the sound. But what I wanna to do to begin with is focus on the ARP section. So what we have up at the top is a very simple chord progression and the synth is in monophonic mode. So when arpeggiator A is enabled, just by clicking on A in the triangle there, you'll see that that's going to arpeggiate the chords and we're in monophonic mode so we're going to hear this. So you can adjust the rate. You can change the distance to make it more interesting. Let's bring that up to seven semitones. And 
and let's adjust the gate. So you can get more of a plucky sound, or you can have the notes overlap with each other, which causes the glide function to kick in. So with a longer gate, you can adjust glide time. Let's change that from straight to swing gate. And let's change the rate. You can really hear the swing coming through in this melody now. Let's change the style. So right now we're going down the notes. Up, down is nice. Down, then up. So you can see that there's a lot of fun you can have with this and you can get some very interesting arpeggiations. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to activate arpeggiator B and this is going to work independently of arpeggiator A and create some very strange arpeggiations I think, some very interesting ones. So what I'm going to do for this is just change the groove to straight and I think we're going to start off just by seeing how that sounds. And let's make that slower. So very simple. And then let's activate arpeggiator B. Just remind ourselves how that sounded with just arpeggiator A. So you see, you see that we have a very low gate value, so we're hearing very kind of low plucky, plucky style notes as opposed to overlapping notes where you hear the glide. But if we activate arpeggiator B and you'll start to hear a higher gate value on B, it's going to create some, some glide action. It's going to sound very interesting. So you can really hear that the power of this synth and what it's capable of doing. Let's take all of those notes, bring them down an octave and bring them in with a beat. So you can see that the arpeggiator section is very interesting because it has two independent arpeggiators working independently of each other, but creating very, very strange rhythms and melodies. In this section of the video, I want to walk you through each of these seven tabs, excluding the up, because we've just looked at that. So let's start with the filter section. Now, obviously you can control the frequency, the resonance amount, and the velocity sensitivity. And then we have the ability to morph between different filter types. So right now you can see we're in low pass mode. This is a notch, this is high pass, and this is a band pass. So some great control there. So you get a lot of control with this filter and then you get a filter envelope that you can assign.
to create effects like that with. So I'm just going to leave that how it is. Let's take a look at the envelope tab. So with the in the envelope tab, you have two different envelopes. There's an amplitude envelope. It has ADSR and also the slopes of the attack, decay and the release. We can link that to the filter if we want to with this link button here. And then we also have a pitch envelope. So you can change the amount here. Bring these sustain down, for example. If you want to get some laser style effects, you can use this. And you can use it in many different ways to create some interesting pitch changes through your notes. Next in the shape tab, we have a shaper. That creates a very nice gentle form of distortion. This is in soft shaper mode. Hard shaper. A bit more aggressive. Sign shaping. And then we have FM modulation. So if I just bring the sustain amount up. can really change the texture and timbre of the sound. Change the pitch of this. It was better on one, I think. So a lot of fun you can have there. And you also have AM mode and the ability to choose, choose from many different waveforms. So signs might sound good. Triangles definitely sound good. And you can even move between different percentage of dry wet or percent of frequency modulation and then different waveform types using this matrix here. Next we have the LFO tab. So there's two LFOs. The first LFO, LFO1, you can adjust the rate. You can have it in sync mode or just in hertz, unsynced. Change between different waveforms. So let's stick with a sign. Change the attack time and then retrigger can be on or off. So a lot of control there. And with LFO1, you can assign it to the amplitude, for example. Very nice. I'm just going to bring that down. You could assign it to the pan position. If you want to get some crazy stereo effects, the pitch and the filter. Right now our filter type is, the frequency is too high, so. And then with LFO2, it's much of the same, except you get some extra controls such as jitter amount. We can smooth that out if we want to. We have an offset control and a phase control. And then we can assign that to any parameter we like within the synth, so I might assign it to the master volume, for example, or the detune amount, or even the glide. So you can experiment with that LFO and get some very interesting results from that. Next, we have the FX tab. So here we have a lot of different effects you can add to the sound. So saturation. So really changing the sound there. Okay, next we have chorus. So we can increase the delay. So chorus is a modulated delay and it creates a kind of widening effect to the sound and it can work very well with certain sounds to create an extra kind of uh, element to them. You can adjust the rate of the chorus and the feedback amount and the delay. And then the mode here. Okay, so that's the chorus tab. Next we have auto pan. So 
So I'll just bring the phase down and bring the shape down. So you can choose to have that on chop mode or pump mode as well. Next we have frequency shift. And you can change the rate between being synced and being unsynced. We have Redux. So they're really degrading the sound there. Excellent, okay. And then we have Reverb. You can control the time and the dry wet. And then we have Delay. And lastly, we have the Presets tab. So this is where you can choose from synth keys, pads, leads, effects, basses, and ups. Okay, so what you can do is use the morph matrix here. And what this allows us to do is morph between combinations of different sounds. And you can assign four different presets to these four different positions in our morph matrix. So let's select, first of all, let's check out this bass preset called Hoarder. I'll take that down an octave or two. And let's assign that to position one. So we just literally click on where it says one on this box. And now let's assign to the position up in the top left of our morph matrix. Let's find another base. So we'll try a class action. And let's assign that to position two. And now we'll try a third one. So we'll try a moop. And we'll assign that to position three. And then lastly, we'll choose Despire. And we'll assign that to position four. So now in our morph matrix, when we change the position of the crosshairs just by clicking in the morph matrix, you can see that for every position we click on, the oscillator positions are changing over here on the left as they're basically coming up with combinations of different amounts of these four different presets. So let's see what it sounds like when the crosshairs are here. And then here. And then here. So you can see how you can get some very interesting combinations of different presets from just using this morph matrix. So that's all I've got time for in this video. I hope you can see the power of the Clone Synth by Sonic Faction. It's a lot of fun to play with, and especially with the Delta Triangulator, you can get some very, very interesting rhythms that you can use for your tracks. So thanks for watching.